Welcome to our discussions on uh, immunity, and we've discussed in previous videos the innate immunity kind of pathway where there's epithelial barriers, phagocytes, complements, natural killer cells. In this video, we're going to discuss adaptive immunity, kind of the overall or big picture idea of what the adaptive immunity is. So this innate immunity is is quick. It's the first responder. Uh, it's you know these natural killer cells, phagocytes, complement epithelial barriers. They're constantly you know they're the first responder, the first defense against all uh, microbes and all uh, you know bugs, if you will, that will get inside our body and get us sick. And so from zero to about 14, 15, 16 hours, somewhere in there. The innate immunity is the main defender, if you will, against these microbes or these bugs that make us sick and, and give us problems. So any time after that, days, weeks, months, years, the adaptive immunity is, is fighting the infections and fighting the problems along with the innate immunity. But, you know, in this time after infection, uh, graph it gives us a good idea the adaptive immunity kind of takes a while to get going but once it gets going it's a very powerful system and in the adaptive immunity we have B cell we have B lymphocytes and we have T lymphocytes now this is a pathway and this is a pathway so the B lymphocyte pathway is also called the humoral immunity and the T lymphocyte pathway is called cell mediated or cellular immunity. So the adaptive immunity can be broken down into two uh, more distinct pathways, the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity. And the adaptive immunity kind of in the word adaptive gives you a hint of what it is. It adapts to a specific uh, antigen. And sometimes, you know, you can get confused about, well, what is actually a microbe by definition and what is an antigen by definition? A microbe by definition is some kind of bug that you can't view on a micro in a microscope, but that causes you problems, basically. And an antigen is, by definition, is an anti body generator. So they kind of took the the first few letters of each word here and may and called it an antigen. So it's anything that causes an antibody to be formed. And these are antibodies here. And they're kind of Y-shaped things and we'll go into the structure of these later. But an antigen is anything that creates an antibody. And that's kind of the older definition. Now the newer definition is anything that can be presented to these cells through the major histability complex pathway. And we'll talk about that in great detail. So an antigen is usually proteins, uh, polysaccharides, you know, sugars linked up together. Um, they can include parts from bacteria, viruses, and other microorganisms, namely coats, you know, any kind of coats that the bacteria, virus, microorganisms have. They have capsules. It could be a capsule. It could be part of a cell wall. It could be part of a flagella or fimbriae, little finger-like projections. And it could be any toxin, any kind of thing that the bacteria and viruses kind of secrete or, you know, emit these toxins. They, you know, it could be that. It could be pollen. A lot of people have allergies, seasonal allergies, and the pollen in the flowers can be an antigen. Which is, uh, this kind of gives hints to these allergic types of reactions that, you know, pollen's not necessarily a bad thing, but it creates an antibody, and so it's an antigen, and then it causes these us to, you know, have a runny nose, have these signs and symptoms of a seasonal allergy. It could be egg whites, you, you know, there could be food allergies, you could have egg white, you could be allergic to wheat, to gluten. Uh, you could be allergic to peanuts. You could be allergic to a lot of different things. And that those, for some reason, create an antibody in our bodies and then promote this cascade. It could be transplanted tissues, organ transplants. Um, you know, they could cause these antibodies to be produced. It could be classified as an antigen and cause this adaptive immunity to fight it. There could be blood cells. You know, if you're an O positive and 
you receive the wrong type of blood or if you're an AB positive and you receive the wrong type of blood, you can have serious problems because these, anti these antibodies are going to be produced um, to fight against whatever you know your body considers to be foreign. And vaccines. Vaccines are a big part of our lives. We all get vaccinated for smallpox and rubella, measles, those types of things. And it's it's an attempt to, you know, if you got some kind of bacteria, it's an attempt to bust this up, the bacteria, take a little small piece of it, stick it in a needle and inject it into us. And then our bodies will say, hey, what's this, you know, what's this little piece of this cell wall doing here that's not part of me? And then they'll create antibodies against it and every time you become you come in contact with that little piece of, of cell wall or cell membrane then your adaptive immunity um, system will will try to you know clear it out from your system and kill it something that's fascinating when you talk about the lymphocytes and antigens is that one lymphocyte only recognizes one type of antigen which is amazing when you get into these memory these memory lymphocytes is that one lymphocyte has receptors for only one antigen on it and you might be thinking wow cuz there's a lot of bugs out there there's a lot of parts really can there you know how can our bodies be so complex and, and have one lymphocyte per every one antigen that's a lot of combinations. But the total population of lymphocytes in our bodies is 10 to the 12th power, which is a big number. And so that's a lot of different combinations of proteins and polysaccharides that can be kind of recombined, if you will, and our body still has the capacity to recognize a lot and a lot of different antigens. So like I said, Previously, you have one pathway that's called B lymphocytes or, or follows the B lymphocyte pathway and then another pathway that's called the T lymphocytes. So that's humoral immunity and cell mediated uh, immunity. So if I scroll over to this picture, I got these pictures from Robin's Basic Pathology 8th edition by the way. So under humoral immunity you have B cells. And then under cellular immunity you have T cells. And we're going to talk about these, you know, these different pathways in, in detail and we're going to talk about these cells. But something to keep in mind is that when you talk about the B cell pathway or the humoral immunity pathway, you're talking about usually an extracellular microbe. A microbe, a bug, a bacteria that's extracellular that is outside the cells. The funny thing about viruses is that they inject themselves inside the cell and then they take over the cell, your cell. They take over the machinery because the cell has all the machinery, has all the parts, if you will, that it needs to replicate itself and to multiply and to you know cause problems. So these viruses inject themselves inside your cells and then they take over the cell and then they use your own cell to fight against you. So that is intra. Intra means within. So the T cell or the cellular immunity pathway is an intracellular microbe problem. And so as we talk about these, just keep this in mind that the B cell is an extracellular um, uh, cell or attack or immune function, humor, humoral immunity, and the cellular immunity is for viruses mainly, for intracellular microbe problems, and that follows the T-cell pathway. So we'll see you in the next video.